Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancey. We frequently say on here that gold revaluation is a process, not an event. Truth is, there are events that create, that serve as signposts or fingerprints of the process that we're talking about. But they happen so intermittently and so convolutedly and so cluttered with noise that it's hard to connect the dots and see the process or the pattern, I should say. Fortunately, the last 72 hours, however, offered us many dots with which connections can be made. The result of which is the following, if you look closely. The gold revaluation process is happening quite literally before our eyes. Let's explore some of those events in summary today. Before we do that, let's check on the markets. The dollar is down 36. The 10-year bond is down one basis point at 4.128. S&P 500 is up an impressive 73 handles at 54.87. I'm doing most of, if not all of yesterday. The VIX is 16.74, down 94. Gold is 24.20, up almost $10. Silver is 28.63, up almost 25 cents. Copper is up as well. Trading 416 up almost seven cents. That's 1.7%, give or take. WTI is also very strong, up two dollars and change at 7815. Natural gas, nobody cares about when it comes to Fed stuff, is trading 207 down a penny, a penny and a half. Bitcoin is down 111 at 66,000, marching to its own tune. Ethereum is 3316, up 37. Palladium is up 19 at 914. And platinum is up 10 at 968. Gold silver ratio is hovering below 85. Grains are all up. Soybean is up almost a percentage point at 1060 after getting slammed yesterday. That's not too much of a surprise. Corn is 387 up a penny, and wheat is 534 up almost two cents. If you want to look at these markets in aggregate, there are two forces going on here. One is positioning repositioning for the Fed Open Market Committee decision today. And the second one is a reaction to yesterday, which may have been part of the positioning. Yesterday, stocks got slammed, the dollar weakened, and gold and silver were very strong. I say stocks got slammed, I pause there, because stocks did get sold net notionally, but it was really a rotation out of tech, uh, out of a tech and into banks and uh, cyclicals. But overall, stocks did not do well yesterday. Let's not fool ourselves. Uh, yesterday's behavior can be perceived as, from the stock point of view, as a stagflationary point of view, meaning stocks expect the Fed to ease, yes. Uh, however, earnings came out very bad. Uh, Microsoft looked very bad. Uh, disappointed. It's earnings season. It's a very heavy earnings season. And Starbucks, very bad. And and uh, uh, was it McDonald's? McDonald's the day before, very bad. And that weighed on the market. However, it did not weigh on gold uh, and it did not weigh on silver for a change. Copper couldn't even hold silver back. Uh, WTI has been selling off for the last week or so. I don't think that's Fed related. I think that's Plunge protection team related. So today, right, moving to, to right now, now is kind of a reaction. Some markets react, some markets continue. So the dollar continues to weaken. 10-year yields are kind of undecided. Stocks bounce, right? Positioning. Dead cap bounce, however you want to call it. Gold continuing. Uh, so that means the buying that wants to buy gold is done. The selling that wants to sell stocks yesterday is done, at least for now. WTI, hard to read that right now. The $2 rally could also be uh, on the back of the Israeli unrest. So if you if you were to look at this market from a third, these markets from a third perspective, right? So I told you there's two major things, the Fed and uh, the earnings, basically. Well, the third thing is that probably the most important thing that I'm giving, that I'm underplaying here, is the is Israel unrest. Uh, they quite shockingly uh uh 
got to a major leader they've been trying to get to for years in Iran, and they got him in Iran, in Tehran. And that's insane. I mean, that's if you're if you're an uh an intel person, you understand it. That's just insane that they did that or that they were able to do it simultaneously. There's the uh looming escalation of problems on the uh, northern front. I'm calling it the northern front now. Wow. With Hezbollah and Lebanon. Uh problems on both sides there if you want to look at it from a moral point of view. So that would be a reason that oil is up and gold is up again. Those are all reasons. There's no specific point to buying gold except that there's no specific uh, relief coming on all fronts, geopolitical, economic, monetary, fiscal, uh, the people in charge running responsibly, uh, the BRICS summit. You know, that's it. You know, gold is the perfect hedge uh, for things that you don't know uh, are going on. Anyway, uh, let's move to the other stories as I'm getting uh, beeped on messages. Let me try and do this quickly uh, before I get lost in my head. All right, so here we go. There's the front page. There's the title, Gold and Silver, the last 72 hours. I'll come up with a better title, uh, maybe. But look, this is pretty much a compendium of what happened in the last 72 hours. In no particular or order, stories that were covered by us and probably for the most part nowhere else. So there you go. Special gold and silver momentum confirmed. That came out last night, and it was a reaction to the market rallying, uh, as we had hoped it would, as well as Michael Oliver, I should say, as well. Michael Oliver reconfirms what he'd been looking at the past few days, specifically justified the momentum signals he'd seen prior to today's rallies in both gold and silver. We had references levels and overlaid them with our own preferred scenario this morning. Yesterday, this is like last night, we just sent this out this morning, new U.S. bill revalues Fed gold to buy Bitcoin. According to Corn, Coin, uh, Corn Desk, that's funny, Coin Desk, U.S. Senator Cynthia Loomis has proposed a new strategic reserve for Bitcoin, financed partly by revaluing the Federal Reserve's gold certificates. The draft legislation outlines a Bitcoin purchase program that aims to acquire up to 200,000 Bitcoin annually over a five-year period totaling 1 million Bitcoin. There's also the revaluation of Federal Reserve Bank's gold certificates to reflect their fair market value. Under the plan, within six months of enactment of the legislation, the Federal Reserve Banks would tender all of their outstanding gold certificates to the Treasury Secretary. Within 90 days after that, the Treasury Secretary would issue new gold certificates to the Federal Reserve that reflect their fair market value of gold. The fair market value, people probably don't think it's like 44 and change. Don't expect it to be big, but it's part of the process. Again, another dot being connected, all right? Gold needs to clear 2384 to 2397. What we said yesterday, that uh, was fruitful yesterday. Another one, Malay offshores Argentina gold. He just did it. He just admitted to it. He doesn't say why. Well, he does say why, but I don't believe the uh, explanation. He doesn't say where and he doesn't say how much. Food for thought. This is our comment on the story, which we have covered. One reason, the main reason for nations offshoring gold has always been to protect it in case of regional warfare, geographic diversification. It is the main reason Europe stored much of its gold in the U.S. for decades post-World War II. Other various reasons exist. But the most likely, the one that's being discussed the most is... Gold is being used as collateral for loan currency by a friendly country. Let's face it, Argentina doesn't really have a lot of good credit left in the world. So if you want to borrow money, they're going to ask for something as collateral. Next story, Goldman CTA report review, more, more active, but the marketplace is showing a little bit more actionable. CTAs are slightly long gold and have some dry powder to use. The rally we saw today again, we wrote that yesterday, was either shorts covering, maybe banks this time, and or macro discretionary buying into the geopolitical news from Israel. On top of it, folks. Exclusive, China and Latin America, silver part one. From an interview that I did with Chris Marcus recently, we had a conversation with Latin American mining executive discussing silver supply chain dynamics from a miner's perspective. During that conversation, we were looking to educate ourselves on a couple of terms. Uh, unexpected but important corroboration was given regarding 
China's side of the supply chain. The final result is a two-part post which pieces together the Latin American-China connection. That's part one. Next, why wait until September to cut? This is about the Federal Open Market Committee. This is Fed week, and as such, there is much debate over the Fed's potential for a rate cut. The financial press is throwing around phrases that we feel only muddy the waters, as this is an important season because of the BRICS summit in the U.S. election. We wanted to give you the real deal. That's a, an analysis and a breakdown of the uh, Goldman Report, as well as some other information uh, regarding the Fed decision, which will be happening today at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. We're skipping the market news, which, by the way, it's not insignificant, uh, but we're just going to go to politics here. Uh, look, Thomas stated that its political bureau chief, I'm, I'm not sure how to say it, Hanea, was killed in Iran by an Israeli airstrike on his house in Tehran. While a Hamas official said the assassination is a cowardly act, they will not go punished, according to... They attacked in Iran to get that guy. And they probably pinpointed it enough so that Iran will look very bad if they say something about it. Iran's supreme leader said Iran sees as a duty to avenge Hanaya's assassination. Uh, th that's rhetoric. It's what you do that matters. Uh, sources involved in the Hamas-Israel hostage deal talk suggest the killing of Hanaya will have an impact on negotiations since the, the Hanaya was a significant figure. The, so it must be some sort of a uh, ceremonial title that his name is. Okay, so there you have it. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot going on, as as Jim Milley would say. Uh, I will try and impersonate him on it. Today is the Fed open market interest rate decision today. There's other data out today, but that's what matters. We continue to say that it's two decisions. They will or will not cut in July, which is on the radar, but not really a high probability. However, some people, uh, it's it's foolish to discount it won't happen. And then there's the, will we cut in September? And that's it. Let's check back with the markets. Let's throw some, let's throw some pretty lines up there for everyone. Okay. This was central bank by, wait, where is that? Do I have to squish this up? Oh yeah, there it is. This was central bank and sovereign bond fine buying after the BIS capped it. So was this. Question now is, is this, was this? And I don't think it was. I mean, I was hoping it was, but it's not. And if the market stays above here, look, if the market is above, say, this line after the Fed today, then there is no accumulation. There's just buying now. And then you have to look at what happens to the market above here. However, if after the Fed day gold comes off, then look for the market to base in here and or base in here, but not get below 2292. 2289 is probably a better level. That's it. So other than that, you're looking at this from a Michael Oliver perspective. Uh, he had a momentum indicator that said uh, basically uh, dips uh, aren't killing the upside momentum, or put it this way, the downside momentum is running out of steam. And the price action yesterday and so far today confirms that. So I'm happy to buy this market on strength after a Fed announcement. I'm happy to buy this market on weakness above a certain level more, um, what's the word, more um, carefully uh, if the Fed news is bearish. I'm Vince. Have a great day.